We are joined now by Gwen Graham, a former Democratic member of Congress, now running for governor. Nice Welcome. to see you. Thanks very much for coming in. Uh, you know, we, we should say that we reached out to the governor's office in light of these new numbers that mm -hmm. have just been revealed. Their response is the same that it was before, which is that even though we gave out this number, it did not absolve the, the, the hospitals and the nursing homes from taking care of their patients at all costs. Why did you pay for these documents to be released? Well, I paid because it is important that we get to the bottom of this for the families of the 14 that died during this tragedy. And the governor gave out his personal cell phone number and gave commitments that he would be responding and, and helping them. And based on the information that we have determined through the public records request, that was not the case. So do you believe he's hiding things? What does this say about the governor's leadership? Well, I think it's very important that we do have transparency, and that's the point of public records, that we know what is going on with our government. So it's a shame that it took a public records request and then me waiting for three months, and then finally after will being willing to pay $1,200 to get these records, they were finally provided. And what they showed was that 120 plus calls came into the governor's personal cell phone number and there are many that were not responded to appropriately. Most were not responded to appropriately. What about the governor's uh, staff's response though, which is that, that those facilities, the nursing homes, the hospitals, whoever it was that called the, that number that the governor had given out, that they really bore the responsibility for making sure that their patients were safe. The governor certainly um, bears some responsibility for slowing down the response. Uh, certainly the nursing homes should have called 911 as soon as they were aware of any emergencies at their facilities. But the reality here is we need to get to the bottom of this. We need to know the full story for the families that lost their loved ones to make sure that this never happens again. What would you have done differently? Uh, let's say you had been governor mm -hmm. uh, and you decided that you too wanted to make yourself accessible uh, in the case of a, of, a, of a natural disaster, which, we were, which was impending at the time. How would you have been able to respond to all of those calls? Well, first, you do not give out your personal cell phone unless you have a process in place that's going to make sure that every single one of those calls is responded to promptly and appropriately. Every single one of those calls that came in deserved to have someone answering the phone on the other end. I think over 120 times it went to voicemails. Answering the phones and then making sure that they provided the help that the governor promised them was going to be there. So do you think this was a false sense of security? People thought they had a, a lifeline directly to the governor. What, what do you think was the point of him <laughs> even giving out a cell phone? I mean, he didn't have to do this. No, he didn't, and I'm not going to try to read into what the governor's rationale was behind it. However, I will say that if I was a citizen and I was a, someone that was given the governor's cell phone number, I would believe that by calling that number, I was going to get the help that I thought he had promised. And clearly that did not happen. But do you, think, do you think he intended to and maybe things just got out of control with the storm and the intentions were good? And well, I again, I'm not going to try to read into what happened during that time, but I do know that when you give out your personal cell phone number and you're the governor of the state of Florida and your citizens are facing an emergency, the citizens of the state have a right to believe that you're going to respond accordingly and clearly following this public records request and the information that was determined by the public records request, that did not happen. I want to ask you before you go about uh, the possibility of a government shutdown later mm. this week. Uh, you were a former member of Congress. Of course, I'm sure you're following uh, the negotiations over DACA, trying to figure out a fix for that and mm -hmm. immigration reform in mm -hmm. general. Uh, what do you make of, of all of this and, and, and what, what advice would you have for your former colleagues in Washington? <laughs> do your jobs. Uh, figure out a way to keep the government from shutting down. That's what they were elected to do, and that's what they should do. And they should take care of, of the dreamers. I mean, these are young men and women who have come here to our country and deserve to be taken care of and provided the support uh, uh, of our federal government, which is not currently happening, and I hope that they come to a solution. And the Democrats, what should they give in return for a DACA fix? I think that what needs to be done is keep the government open and take care of the dreamers. Those should be the two priorities. Gwen Graham, a former Democratic member of Congress who is now running for the, the Democratic nomination for the right to run for the governor's office later on in the year. It's Thank good you. to see you again. Thanks very Thank much you. for coming. I'm sorry under these circumstances. Thank you.